think one of the most important conversations that we could be having collectively as a species right now is actually on the subject of gender equality and harmony of the sexes. Now, this doesn't just exist on a physical level. This is a mental, emotional, spiritual conversation. It even comes down to the harmony and the integration and union between our own brain hemispheres. Many people are more predominantly left-brained or more predominantly right-brained. And if we're focused in existing and thinking on one side of our own inner spectrum than the other, we can create divisiveness within ourselves and that can go to reflect divisiveness outside of ourselves in the relationships that we have. This also, of course, applies then on a physical level, even down to the question of how many genders are there? I mean, this, it's, curious to me that this is a, such a big conversation today and many people argue and fight about how many genders there are and what the nature of being a human actually looks like. Now in order to understand and answer this question, we actually have to recognize that there are three tiers essentially of how we understand sex and gender. First there is sex, the biological materialization of that gender divide on the physical level. And if we're looking purely at the physical, there are two sexes, male and female. And then perhaps you could say hermaphroditic if someone is born with both sexes, although that is very, very rare case. Now, on the other hand, we go a level up higher than that. We have gender. Now, this is where things start to get confusing today. Many people believe that there are infinite numbers of genders, but if we look at the relationship between the, at least the etymology, like the definition of the word and the root of the word, gender is a construct based on sex. Gender is understanding masculine and feminine pillars based on what is physically manifested as well. But we also start to understand that this is where things start to become more energetic than just material. So on the energetic level, we can see within ourselves Everybody has masculine and feminine energy within them. And it's within that existence, within that energetic understanding, that we start to have a blending of energy. You can have more masculine and some feminine energy. You can have more feminine and more masculine energy. You can have a masculine body with more feminine energy, or a feminine body with more masculine energy, and so on and so forth to varying degrees. And then as a level on top of that, something that is only new in recent history is the concept of gender identity. So these three pillars then are sex, gender, gender identity. Now this is the realm that is the most permeable and malleable because it comes down to how we're choosing to think and identify within that existing spectrum of masculine and feminine energy. This is why people say that there's an infinite number of genders or there could be an infinite number of genders because within the spectrum of how one's masculine and feminine energy is blending together, you could kind of pick out any individual space in between there and give that a name if you want to. And so it's kind of like saying, look, you've got seven colors, right? You've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, but then, in the space between all of those colors, we've got infinite more colors too. We've got fuchsia and magenta, aqua, and it goes on and on and on. There's so many possibilities of how we can identify and name and label things. In order for us to find, I think, a sense of peace and reconciliation between these two opposing views of gender and sex and sexual identity, or gender identity, what we want to be able to do is slowly but surely become very clear with each other and ourselves as to which dimensions we're talking about when it comes to these things. We can express ourselves one way. We can have an inner experience another way. We can have a way of looking at the world that either matches or does not match how we feel inside. At the end of the day, our experience of ourselves is our own. We don't have to force other people to see things our way. But if we are able to live in the most authentic way possible, most authentic and true to our own hearts and our own experience of life, 
and practice kindness and virtue and goodness in everything that we do, then it doesn't really matter. Don't worry so much about trying to convince other people that you're this or that. Just be yourself, but be good in that. And if you find that you are not such a good person or you feel like you're not a good person, then maybe it's time to go within, check yourself on a deeper level, practice healing your heart, merge with your soul, and then be that version of yourself. I promise, the takeaways in life will be so much greater if you're able to take the time to do that than just arguing about who's right. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I hope this video helped.